Hello again, this is Preheat. Welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. So if you're wondering why this video is so long, it's because I have broken down Sun Fury Arcane in this video into steps in order to try and teach it in a better way, a way that uh, usually in my coaching students are more receptive to understanding. And speaking of coaching, this video is sponsored by Medify. Obviously, there's a lot of free resources out there that you can use if you're looking to learn how to play something in World of Warcraft. But for those of you who are looking to maybe just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone who can look into what problems you're having and how to resolve those issues, I'm happy to report that I'm actually the top coach on Medify for World of Warcraft. So if you're looking for coaching, definitely go check that out. But they've also added this really awesome feature called groups and people can join in for free. Uh, obviously, you can also support me if you want through this. I do have some tiers in here with some incentives. If you want to check it out, definitely go click the link in the description below. Now, obviously, joining the group is free. So if you want to just click that link, you can join the conversation there. But if you're looking for discounts for coaching or log reviews, they come every month, access to like our monthly meetings where we just kind of have a chat and Q&A session, then consider becoming a supporter. Anyways, back to the video. So Arcane Mage has two main resources. You're going to see this indicated on my UI. So at the bottom, we have the mana bar. Every mage has mana, but for Arcane, it's actually way more important. Uh, the way that you spend mana primarily is through Arcane Blasting. So like Arcane Blast will consume a lot of mana and notice how it revs up whenever you get charges. So basically, whenever you have Arcane Charges, which you can have four of, think of them like combo points. Once you have your four Arcane Charges, the, the cast time is reduced on Arcane Blast. See how it takes more mana whenever I cast Arcane Blast here? It's going to consume more mana and also it's going to be faster and it's going to deal a ton more damage. So each Arcane Charge is, is basically boosting my damage on Arcane Blast. You can see that in the tooltip for it. It says each one is going to increase my damage by 86%. It's a baseline amount plus whatever your mastery is. So in my case, I have 26% mastery. So you can read it in the tooltip. It says arcane charges increase the damage of your next arcane blast uh, by additional 27%. Arcane barrage by 18%, right? And that's going to be wrapped in with the tooltip for arcane uh, blast as well. So like if we go over to arcane blast, see in the tooltip, it says 86 here. So there's like a baseline amount that's being added on top. So it's actually 60 plus whatever your mastery is. So essentially, Arcane Blast, as you gain Arcane Charges, is going to deal more damage. Uh, that amount is going to be based on your mastery, but also a baseline amount of 60. And it's also going to consume more mana, and it's going to be faster cast time. So that's one way that your Arcane Charges is being impacted. You, you generate Arcane Charges in a lot of different ways, but one of the ways is through Arcane Blast. So the way that you spend the Arcane Charges, we'll, we'll get back to how you can also generate them too, but the way you spend them is through Arcane Barrage. So this is your spender. It doesn't cost mana. Okay, so this is a free spell. It actually gives you back mana. So the first resource we talked about, which was mana, was uh, was a resource that we primarily spend through Arcane Blasting. But we get it back through Arcane Barraging and also just by getting our mana back in other ways, right? But uh, Arcane Barrage consumes the charges. This is how we spend our combo points, our Arcane Charges. And the damage on this thing is going to also be increased depending on how many charges we have. The amount of charges we have is going to impact how hard our Arcane Barrage hits a lot. It's going to hit way harder with more charges. And it's going to hit more enemies because of Arcane Cleaving if we have this talent, which we only take if there's more than one target. Otherwise, we would take Consortium Bubble. And then we have Resonance, which is also increasing the damage of all of them. Um, and this is, in a way, it's like Funnel, right? Because more targets means that we're going to hit the primary target for harder as well. And then there's other components too, right? We've also got our Orb Barrage. We have a chance per Arcane Charge whenever we Barrage to basically get a refund. We're going to shoot out an Arcane Orb. Um, the other generator that we haven't talked about yet is Arcane Orb. So Arcane Orb, whenever we use it, we're going to get one Arcane Charge instantly. And then we're also getting charges per target hit. So this can easily give you back all four charges, right? All we need to do is have three enemies. And if we use an Orb, it's going to instantly give us back the charges. So with this talent, whenever we use our barrage, there's a chance that we'll get refunded those charges, right? They'll just come back to us because we'll shoot out an orb for free as long as you hit. But uh, essentially, the idea is you're generating charges with blast or orb or through other means. Um, you're spending charges with barrage. So yeah, if I have orb barrage talented here, uh, whenever I press my uh, barrage, so like I have four charges here, I'm just going to barrage here. Notice how I shout the orb and it just instantly refilled my charges. That's the idea with this. Whenever you press your barrage, there's a chance you're going to get it back. It's a 40% chance here because I have four charges. 
So notice how those first two gave it, uh, but the third one did not, right? So that that is just an RNG thing. Um, and you'll notice in my UI, I have like a cha-ching sound whenever this happens because I want to be able to react instantly. If I hear the orb go out with the cha-ching, um, if that happens, that I know I got a proc. And that is great because that means I just immediately refunded my charges. So the biggest thing that you're going to lose damage as Arcane with is being stuck without charges. Obviously, we talked about how Arcane Blast, whenever we use it, gives us charges, but it's actually a really inefficient way to get them. Um, so like if I'm using Arcane Blast at like zero charges, this is really bad. Like that Arcane Blast isn't going to really do damage and it could give me two if I proc, but it's just going to give me one charge there. So that's not very good. What's much better to do is to have an Arcane Orb available, right? So like basically what you're trying to do as Arcane is you're trying to maintain your four charges as, min as much as you can. So in a situation where I want to press Barrage because I want to get the AoE damage out, I'm going to have to think about, am I able to do that while also getting right back up to four charges? Do I have a way to get my charges back up? Do I have an Arcane Orb? Do I have something else that will give me charges easily? So the other way that's easy to get Arcane Charges with, uh, is this talent right here, High Voltage. This allows us to get Arcane Charges through missiles. So if I have this talent, which is really great for AoE, um, I can also get charges from my missiles. And especially if I get the Aether Attunement buff. The Aether Attunement buff is every three clear casts I spend, I get like a Giga Missile that's going to AoE. It's basically going to instantly refill my charges. Um, and it's going to give me a ton of damage with Harmony and does a bunch of other great stuff. But yeah, uh, what I'm thinking about is like, okay, is there an easy way for me to get back up to four? If I am stuck at zero after I use my Barrage and I have no way to easily get back up to four, that's really bad. I want to be able to basically sit on four. So I don't want to cash out. Uh, even if there is a chance that I get it refunded, I don't want to cash out because then I might be just be stuck at zero charges and that's going to be really, really bad if that happens. It's going to kill my damage. One thing you can do to help that situation, by the way, is taking out Dematerialize or another low impact talent um, and putting it into our Charged Orb because this, this talent gives us two Arcane Orbs. This will be less damage, but it's better quality of life because now I have two orbs to look at to make sure that I have the way to get right back up to full charges. So we talked about the two resources. We talked about Arcane Charges and Mana. Let's talk more about the most important talent here because this thing is almost a resource in terms of how important it is. So Nether Precision is something that you actually do need to track. It's really, really important that you play around Nether Precision. No other talent in the tree makes more of an impact on your rotation than this talent. And this talent right here is one of the main reasons why we use Arcane Missiles. So basically, whenever we use our missiles, whenever we consume our clear casting, that's going to give us two stacks of this buff that make our next two Arcane Blast or Arcane Barrage hit 20% harder. It's important to note that it actually allows for double dipping on the last charge of this. So if I'm at two Nether Precision and I spend one on the Arcane Blast and then I do a Blast into Barrage on the second, I queue a Barrage from the Blast. So both are going off at the same time. I can basically get two uses out of a single buff. That's what the double dipping part is. And it still works for Nether Precision. And it's very important that you understand this because it's going to be core to the other stuff that we'll talk about later for some Fury. But just know that you need to track Nether Precision and you need to basically activate it if you don't have it up. If you have a Missile Proc, which is the Parenthesis, like you have like uh, this Parenthesis here, this week or also is available on my uh, in the links if you want it. But whenever you have this available, like if I press a Missile, it's going to give me Nether Precision. See how I have two buffs of this? So that will allow me to on my next two casts to uh, to get more damage. So yeah, now that we've talked about that, this the basics of the rotation in single target is going to look something like this. And this is without playing around some fury. So I'm just going to talent out of all this stuff. Okay, so I've swapped over the spell slinger just because I want to uh, only talk about the core parts of this before we talk about the sun fury stuff. So that's why I'm spell slinger here just to show off like the the main ideas of the rotation. So um, once I'm at four charges, so I'm just going to get up to four here. Once I'm at four charges, the idea is I just want to blast. And then if I have a missile proc, I'm going to use it, right? So missiles is up here. I'll missiles. And then I'll just do two blasts, right? And I'm just, I'm just alternating between using missiles and blasts. So I'm just blasting if I don't have uh, missiles to cast. And if I do, then I'll do the missiles. And I'll do two blasts, right? That's the basics of it. If you want to just get the basics down, that's it. You're, just, you're literally just doing two blasts into the missiles. And you do have mana to worry about. So like you eventually will run out of mana. But there are ways that you're going to keep your mana up that we'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, generally speaking, though, like if I run out of mana, so I'm just going to keep going here. Um, if I'm in the situation where I can't cast like more spells, then what I would do is I would just brush, right? So typically what you do here is you would orb to get those charges back. And then you just go back into it. And you're just going to try to basically not run out of mana. Um, now, whenever you're playing naturally, you will have a uh, you'll use your cooldowns too. And the cooldowns will help you keep your mana up. 
right? So this is not how it's actually going to be, but just be aware, like there is a situation where you where you will run out of mana. You, you want to make sure that you don't have uh, instances where you're not casting spells, where you're just uh, idling, right? Like you don't want to be idling as a caster. You want to always be casting ABC. So that's why if you don't have the mana to cast a blast, then you need to instead cast a barrage. And then after that, you have zero charges. So you need to have a way to get back, right? So that would be like arcane orb in that case. But that is the basics of arcane. This is the level one foundational stuff. No cooldowns, no clipping missiles, no burden of power, none of that stuff. It's just arcane blasts and using missiles to get nether pre precision and then spending the nether precision sacks. So now that we've talked about the basics of arcane, let's talk about how Sun Fury impacts this and things that you might change in the rotation and also the cooldowns that you're going to be using. So I want to start off by just explaining what Sun Fury changes for Arcane. Uh, the biggest thing here is that we're going to be getting a buff that basically gives us increased damage on our next cast of Arcane Blast or Arcane Barrage. And we have another buff that's going to be giving us four charges after we do that. So it, it basically refunds our charges if we Arcane Barrage. So this basically gives us a lot of free mana because anytime we are consuming Glorious Incandescence with, a, with an Arcane Barrage, we are getting back our four charges and we're getting the mana from it and we're also getting the meteorites from it. So this is going to be one of the ways that your mana bar doesn't run empty. Now there are other things in Sun Fury to talk about too. Obviously we've got some like passive buffs. We've got the bird that's going to come out and deal damage. Um, we've got other impacts here, but I don't want to get too much into the weeds on these. I just want to mention one thing. Just know that Arcane Soul is the thing that pops up whenever you have a little purple icon on your screen. Um, and it's always after your Arcane Search. We'll talk about how to play around Arcane Soul in just a little bit, but for now, just know that there is a buff that you get that basically gives you free brages, like you can just mash brush. But uh, yeah, so Burden of Power. The way that we get Burden of Power is by just casting Arcane Blast and Arcane Brages. So whenever we generate a sphere, you'll notice on my head, I've got a little orb above my head right now. This is one of the spheres. These ones are the buff that you'll see here. This is just bird food. It gives us damage. It's not really something that we need to worry about too much. Um, it does have some impacts, but it doesn't really matter a whole lot. And you also get them back out of combat, but it takes a little bit of a while for them to come back. Uh, that's not the one we actually care about. The one we care about is the one that we get that works towards getting one of those. So you notice it on my UI. It's this little buff right here. Looks like a little Frostfire emblem. Um, this guy, Spellfire Spheres, plural. Very important distinction. So once we max this thing out, it's going to go up to five. What's going to happen is, is we'll be at a point where our next one will give us burden. So right here, I'm going to cast Arcane Blast. This will give me burden of power. See that? That's this glowing orange buff. Okay, so here we have burden of power. So uh, if I have burden of power available and I do like an Arcane Blast, that's going to bring me to Glorious Incandescence here. And if I do a Blast into Barrage, I double dipped on that Nether Precision. So that Nether Precision, even though I had one charge of it left, I got two spells off with the damage increase. And I also consumed Glorious Incandescence which gave me back to four charges. That barrage also with AoE, it could also potentially proc or barrage. And also, obviously, uh, the biggest thing is just my mana bar is, is steadily keeping itself up just because I am spending the mana. So now we need to put the two thoughts together, right? We have Nether Precision. Now we have the Burden of Power interaction. So basically with your clear cast, you just want to send them right away. And then anytime you have a situation where you're at one Nether Precision and you've got Burden of Power, you just queue a barrage from the blast. That will instantly use the burden of power on the blast. It will instantly consume the glorious incandescence on the barrage. And you'll be back at four charges. And you're going to have two spellfire spheres after you do that. Now, if I'm just blasting, obviously, anytime I get missiles, I'm just going to send that shit right away. If I don't have nether precision up. So like right here, um, I have missiles and I have burden of power. So in this case, I'm actually going to do a blast into a blast brush because I want to double dip on this nether precision. This is the change that they made to Burden of Power where it doesn't double dip. Since Burden of Power no longer double dips with Arcane Barrage, I want to just use that Glorious Incandescence to double dip on Nether Precision instead. Here we don't have any Burden, so we're just blasting this twice, right? And then we're just continuing blasting until we get the missiles. We get the missiles here. Now I have only one charge, so I'm going to blast into Blast Barrage to double dip on Nether Precision. Here we have the Burden up, and we don't have Nether Precision up. This is the third case. In this case, I just blast into Barrage. So those are the three cases that you'll find with Burden of Power. And it just depends on the state of your Nether Precision buffs. You just, you treat it the same way that you would treat your four-piece bonus. If you're not currently casting Arcane Blasts and you get Burden of Power, there is actually another case, but we're going to wait to cover that in the advanced section. The tier bonus for Arcane, once we get the four-piece, is going to be a chance, very small chance. Uh, whenever we use Arcane Blast or Arcane Barrage, it's going to make our next Arcane Barrage deal increased damage and generate four Arcane Charges. Just think of this exactly the same way as Glorious Incandescence. 
You're just using it to double dip on your last nether precision. Unless you don't have nether precision or clear casts, then you would just queue a barrage from your arcane blast. That's really it. So yeah, it's just gonna make your mana easier to manage and also give you a little bit of extra damage as well. Basically, just think of the four piece bonus, which is called intuition, that buff. Think of that buff as the exact same thing as Glorious Incandescence. It's not quite the same thing, but think of it that way because you're gonna play around it the same way. Now, you probably notice whenever I'm just going to town on my rotation that sometimes I let my missiles fully channel and sometimes I don't. So the logic here is if I have Aether Attunement, I let my missiles fully channel. And if I don't have Aether Attunement, then I'm gonna clip them. So right here, I'm gonna queue the next spell before the missiles finishes, right? That's what I mean by clipping them. And if I have Aether Attunement, then obviously I'm not gonna do that because I want my missiles to channel more. Uh, it's gonna increase the damage on the missiles. Also, they will AOE, as you can see here, right? So that's why we are doing that. We want to clip all missiles that aren't Aether Attunement buffed. That's the buff we get every three missiles. And if it has Aether Attunement, then we don't clip it. So essentially just treat missiles. If you just have it without Aether Attunement, treat it as a GCD. Queue up your next spell instantly. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to play around Burden of Power, Glorious Incandescence, and how to clip your missiles and win, let's talk about how to actually use your cooldowns. Before we talk about our opener, I wanna to briefly touch on the cooldowns. So the first one we're gonna use in the sequence is Evocation. This is a 1.5 minute cooldown. It gives us a ton of mana, basically refills our whole mana bar and gives us clear casting. It is also going to give us a damage amp and we wanna fully charge this thing before we begin combat. After that, we're gonna have Arcane Surge. Arcane Surge is another 1.5 minute cooldown. It spins a bunch of our mana and it gives us uh, one clear casting charge and also it deals a little damage and we're gonna get a buff that increases our damage by 35% and also a buff that gives us a ton of mana during it. This is our burn phase. We also have Touch of the Magi. Touch of the Magi is a damage accumulator. It basically takes the damage you put into it, stores it, and at the end it's going to explode and deal the damage to the target and other nearby enemies. It's also important to note that Touch of the Magi does have some other talents that uh, work with it. So we have some pulsing damage on it whenever we hit the target with Touch Up. Also, we have Magi Spark, which basically takes the damage that we deal from Arcane Barrage, Arcane Blast. Uh, the first ones that hit, it's going to make them deal double damage. And then also for two seconds after you do your Arcane Missiles, those missiles are also going to deal double damage. Um, once all three of those have connected, you're going to have an explosion, and that explosion is going to also deal AoE damage. Touch of the Magi gives you four Arcane Charges. So typically with Touch of the Magi, if we have four Arcane Charges available, we want to actually cast a spell into it. So we could cast like a Arcane Barrage and then apply the Touch of the Magi before the Arcane Barrage makes contact. That will allow us to spin our Arcane Charges and immediately refill them, making use of the four Arcane Charge generation. That's what you're gonna do on the opener and all of the subsequent Touch of the Magis as high voltage. Uh, without high voltage, you're just gonna do this on every Touch of the Magi after the first one. And then we have Shifting Power. Shifting Power is what we use after we're done with our cooldowns. It just allows our abilities to come up faster. So we basically just use this for the cooldown reduction. It gives us 12 seconds of cooldown reduction. We finish out the Arcane Soul window, which happens after our burn, which we'll talk about more in just a little bit. Um, once those are done, we're gonna use Shifting Power, just get everything back online. Another important cooldown to note is Mirror Image. You can use this before the pull and it'll make it so that you don't have threat, which is really nice. Uh, and it will also make it so that your damage taken is reduced as well. So when it comes to your stats, uh, the best stat for Arcane is gonna be Haste, generally. Uh, but whenever it comes down to the other one, it kind of depends on the situation. It's always best to sim your own character and look at the upgrades you have available and see what you can do to make your stats better. Just trust the sims instead of going off of a uh, like a tier list of stats, okay? But I know people still want this. So generally speaking, in single target, mastery is performing ahead of my other stats. That's just my situation. Uh, generally, an AoE crit is performing ahead. Uh, but I've noticed that Verse is not too far behind. So I think it really is just a sim at yourself angle, but just make sure that you have a lot of haste. Haste is really important. Also, whenever it comes to the best race, uh, currently that's going to be Mechanome, but obviously you don't have to play Mechanome. It's a very, very minimal thing. You can play whatever race you want. And for Mythic Plus, obviously Dwarf is insane because you have the ability to just clear debuffs. But I like Mechanome, uh, even though it looks a little goofy. You can make some funny mogs with it, and it is going to be the best for raid. So that's why I'm rocking. When it comes to embellishments, uh, we don't really know what the best embellishments are. By the time you watch this video, it's probably going to be different. But right now, I'm seeing that the best combination is Ascendancy plus something else. But you should just refer to the Wowhead guide uh, that Purim writes for the best embellishments and all that stuff because that's going to be constantly changing and I can't update the video with that information. Uh, but whenever it comes to the best trinkets, 
So best trinket is going to be uh, Sack Brood, or I guess second best trinket is going to be Sack Brood. Our best one comes from the raid, which I don't have access to yet, uh, but it's going to be off of Silken Court, and I'm pretty sure every caster wants this trinket, but it's really insane for us for Execute, since we kind of save it until Execute to pop this thing. It's a stat stick, it's a variable cooldown use, um, and it's going to convert all those stacks that we'll be gaining over the fight into even more intellect for our Execute. So yeah, Spy Masters is the GOAT. Make sure you get your hands on this thing. The Treacherous Transmitter is also good, but it's kind of annoying to use because you have to follow instructions like jumping and moving. Uh, yeah, not, uh, in, my, in my experience, not fun to play around, um, but it, it's decent, right? So if you can't get your hands on the Spy Master, you may be stuck with this trinket and following the cryptic instructions that it gives you. Definitely make sure you get a weak aura for that. I don't have one because I don't have the trinket, but uh, I would just search that up on wago.io. So on the poll, we're going to begin by using Evocation. Evocation gives us a little damage amp. It's going to give us a whole bunch of mana, which doesn't really matter since we're already full of mana. It's also going to give us an Arcane Charge and one Clear Casting. That's going to be the Arcane Missiles parenthesis you see here. Uh, we're going to let this thing fully channel. Now, once this thing is finished, we're going to use Arcane Missile next. All right, so Arcane Missile is going to give us Nether Precision stacks. That's going to make our first Arcane Blast, Arcane Barrage do more damage. And we're actually going to clip this missile with Arcane Surge, our big cooldown. So here we're going to clip the missile as soon as Arcane Surge is available on the GCD here. So right here we clip. Now we're casting Arcane Surge. And from this Surge, since we're playing non-high voltage, we do not have four Arcane Charges. Since we don't have four Arcane Charges, we would not do a barrage into this Touch of the Magi. Instead, we're just going to apply Touch of the Magi here. So we Surge, and as the Surge is finishing, I am queuing up the Touch of the Magi. And then we're going to immediately start casting Arcane Blast. So right here, I've got two stacks of Nether Precision, one clear casting available. So we're going to be doing two Arcane Blasts and then an Arcane Missile. This part is always going to be this way. You'll always have an extra clear casting here because the Arcane Surge also gives you a clear cast. So two Arcane Blasts. We get our first stack of Spellfire Spheres here, a second one, and then we use the Missiles. We queue the Missiles from that. And since this Missiles does not have Aether Attunement, we're going to go ahead and press our next Arcane Blast here. And right here, I don't have any missiles, right? So I'm just going to keep blasting. And we got a missiles proc right here. So I'm actually going to use this missiles next since we don't have nether precision. The next thing to do is to get nether precision by using clear casting on arcane missiles. And so here we're about to be at burden. Notice that uh, because of haste values currently, you actually have to kind of have lust to be able to get fit the arcane barrage in the touch of the magi window. Uh, I expect that probably won't be the case by the time we get to the raid. It's probably just a stat issue since it's the start of the expansion. Uh, but I just feel like it's important to note this because if you're not lusty on the pole, you may have to plan this out a little bit differently to make sure that you get the barrage in the opener. Hopefully you'll have your tier bonus though and maybe just one intuition proc will do it for you. So right here, notice how I have one nether precision and I have burden of power. So that means we're going to queue a barrage from this arcane blast, which we do right there. And since this Arcane Barrage has now been sent, this is the last requirement for the Touch of the Magi. It's coming just in time. It's going to pop right here. Boom, it does the explosion. And we still have some Arcane Surge left, but we're just going to keep blasting here unless we get the missiles. Just keep blasting, keep blasting. So I want to point out this moment right here. So because the missile proc came from the blast, and I obviously always want to be casting, so I already started casting a new blast here. Um, the correct thing to do here would actually be for me to finish this arcane blast and then missile so that I can then double dip on the glorious incandescence later. Uh, however, I'm not uh, familiar enough with this rotation. I didn't react fast enough. So in this case, I actually just queue the barrage from this burden as if I didn't have nether precision or clear casting available. Um, so you'll see me do that, but just be aware that if you're in this exact situation right here where you got the clear cast from the cast that also got you burden, you would use the missile and then you would do a blast blast barrage afterwards. That would be the proper way to do this. It's just this is this is one of the weird cases that you'll see very rarely uh, because it requires a lot of situations, a lot of conditions to be met. But this would be with the new glorious incandescence. You would missile from this blast and then do blast blast barrage so you could double dip on the nether precision. Instead, I'm just going to brush here. OK, and uh, right here, obviously, we have the missiles, so we're going to spend those missiles. And right here, our Arcane Surge has ended. So now we're in Arcane Soul. If you want my weak aura, it'll be in the description. That's what this uh, is. It basically goes down as time goes on. But uh, basically, the idea is during Arcane Soul, this is part of Sun Fury Hero Talents, 
we're going to be able to just mash barrage until we have three clear cast. Of course, whenever you have three clear casts, you want to use a missile afterwards. But at the very end of Arcane Soul, in the last GCD that we have available of Arcane Soul, we want to use a barrage because we want to make sure that we end our Arcane Soul with three charges of clear casting. Uh, and then after that, you're just going to use your shifting power. Okay, so just to show Arcane Soul again, here is me exiting Arcane Surge. So Soul is about to begin. So right here, I'm going to use barrage. And I'm going to barrage again until I get to three stacks of clear casts. And now I have plenty of time to be able to use a missile and then another barrage before this thing ends. So I'm going to go ahead and channel a missile. And then I'm going to finish out with a barrage, which will give me my third charge of clear casting here. Okay, so technically, uh, right here, since we have three charges of clear cast, the correct thing would be to use an arcane missile, but I'm actually just going to go for a shifting power here just to get it on cooldown right away, uh, and so that we can set for everything else. Uh, the reason why you want to typically use your clear cast as soon as you hit three charges here, regardless of the situation, is you don't want to be overcapping on your uh, arcane missiles. You could actually overcap if you got like a TA proc, uh, Temporal Anomaly. That's one of your talents on the class side at the very bottom while your cap sounds. That could overcap it here, but I'm just going to go for the shifting power. And then afterwards, I'm going to use my missiles here, and it's a full channel missile. That was the reason why I went for the shifting power first. I didn't want to have to delay it by this full channel. And then, so obviously after that, uh, you know, we fully channeled this. We have another precision. We're at four charges. We're just going to use Arcane Blast. And, you know, just use the missiles as we get them, obviously clipping. Okay, so right here, we're going to use our missiles. And we have Touch of the Magi coming up. So whenever Touch of the Magi comes up, this is like your second Touch of the Magi of the fight. It actually happens a lot sooner than you think, right? 45 second cooldown, I'm using it here at 35 seconds. The reason being, Shifting Power made it come up sooner. So I'm going to go ahead and go for this Touch by using Barrage into Touch. Now Barrage is going to spend my four Arcane Charges, but Touch of the Magi instantly gives me four back. And Touch of the Magi can be used off the global cooldown. So that's why we're going to use the macro to do a barrage into touch, basically doing them at the same time. You can do this manually too, but if you're like right against the boss, it can be hard to pull off unless you have a lot of practice. So it's easier to have like a macro for it and also have another button where you can do it manually for the opener. So as this missiles is finishing up here, I'm going to do the, the barrage into touch. So barrage into touch here. Notice how for a moment I have zero charges. It's going to immediately be back up to four here in just a moment. See that? And the barrage hasn't made contact yet, but touch has been applied. And now I would do a blast barrage because I have one stack of nether precision and I have burden of power. That way I double dip on the nether precision there. And then obviously here I have Aether Tumit, so same rules as always. If I have Aether Tumit, I'm going to let this thing fully channel. Actually clipped that one on accent. By the way, the difference between clipping all your missiles and not clipping Aether Tumit specifically is only 1%. So it's not a huge deal if you do it. Um, but obviously, we want to let those fully channel. It's just better practice. So here, as our touch is ending, this is what in the past has been kind of seen as like a conserve phase. But we don't really conserve our mana anymore. We're just going to spend all of it. And basically, what we're trying to do is just get as much damage in as we can until our cooldowns come back up, which is going to be happening about... 32 seconds here. But the reason why it's really important that you get this Touch of the Magi out as soon as possible, the second one, is because that will actually delay your next set of cooldowns. Like, if you actually hold on to this Touch for too long, like you don't use it right away, then what's going to happen is, is you're going to get back to your cooldowns again, but you won't have Touch available, and it's going to desync the whole thing. Basically, the cadence of this entire uh, cooldown set is, is matched to the metronome of Touch of the Magi. So it's really, really important that you don't delay that second Touch. Uh, yeah, but just continuing along, right? I'm not going to repeat myself on the, the same things we've been talking about. Just continuing, but you'll, you'll see my mana dwindle here. Now, I did get a lucky Arcane Surge proc there. Love to see those. But uh, running out of mana is a concern, and it's probably only going to happen if you're playing properly at about 10 or so seconds left on your evocation. I don't run out of mana here, uh, but if you were to run out of mana, we already talked about this, but you would make sure to just use an Arcane Barrage, and then if you're at zero charges... You have Arcane Orb available, you could just send the Orb, right? So right here, I'm just continuing along. I'm able to barely stay afloat. But if I were to run out of mana here, I'll just Barrage Orb, right? Fairly simple. Now, my Touch of the Magi is only about 7 seconds out. Evocation's coming up here. So usually whenever Touch is about 6 seconds out, that's when you can go ahead and send everything, and everything should line up well. 
So here we're going to go ahead and do another blast just to make sure it all lines up properly. And then we're going to evocation. So same deal as before. This is the same as the opener, only this time we have four arcane charges. And by the way, you should have four arcane charges for all of your burns except for on the pull if you are playing these single target talents. So the, the pull is the only one where you don't do the barrage and the touch. Technically, you would also not do it if you didn't have four charges, but you should have four charges, right? Uh, you're pretty much trying to have four charges the whole time. So anyways, um, if you didn't have them, you'd orb or do something else. Just make sure you have four. Uh, but yeah, we're going to evocation here. And then same deal as the opener, right? Except for queuing the barrage, and then we're going to do a touch. So it's going to be missiles. We're going to clip it here with the arcane surge. Uh, I actually let it go a little bit longer because I noticed my surge wasn't quite up. It was almost up, but not quite there. Uh, but anyways, we're going to surge here, and I'm going to use barrage into touch. So you can look down here at my spell sequence. You see the barrage goes off, and then you're going to see the touch happen right here, basically at the same time, right? And then now we have burn at power and one nether precision. So we're going to use a blast into barrage here. Boom, double dips on the nether precision. Now we have an eight or two-minute missile, so we're going to send this missiles full channel. Okay, and then as this missile is ending, we're obviously doing two arcane blasts. And then we're just, you know, playing normally, just making sure that we make use of nether precision. Uh, right here, I have bird and power to nether precision. So what do you do? Say it all together. Three, two, one. Okay, so if you, if you didn't say anything, it's supposed to be blast into blast barrage. So as we're coming to the end of arcane surge here, it's the same deal as before, right? We're just going to try to use our arcane blast down to the wire. Once arcane soul has activated, that's when we start barraging until we get to three stacks of clear casting. One, two, three. I got a proc there, so I got Esther one. So I still have plenty of time. I'm going to use a missiles here and then end it with a barrage. Right. And there it is. Same situation as before. We're just going to use our uh, shifting power, our little mini burn. And it literally just repeats like this over and over and over and over and over until the end of the fight. Keep in mind, though, I'm in execute here. So my next arcane surge, if this was a, an actual raid boss um, and I had the best in slot trinket, which is the uh, spy master's trinket. I would use my Spy Masters on the next Arcane Surge because I'm going to get a ton of damage from that, right? Because the, the boss is in Execute, I'm going to do more damage in Execute. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to single target. It's, uh, it's a lot to remember if you're trying to get used to it, but I really recommend, if you're struggling with this, to go back and listen to the part one where we break down just the basics of Arcane and just practice that part. And then move on to the part two where we talk about how Burden the Power influences it, right? And then come back to this step here, okay? And then AOE is going to be its own separate step because we're basically playing the same way we would in single target for AOE, but just with some extra conditions that are going to allow us to get out a whole lot more arcane barrages. Okay, so now that you've got the basics of the single target rotation down, let me add a little bit more advanced stuff. And this is super new stuff that just, uh, I guess, Porum just cooked up. So uh, we want to talk about this real quick. So uh, basically, the first thing is how you do your opener. Um, in Sims, the, the robot can't really do all the pre-combat stuff. There's a limitation in SimCraft where it can't do all the spells it needs to pre-combat. But uh, in reality, in practice, this is going to be a better opener. So what you're going to do is actually evocation. And then instead of casting the missiles first, you're actually just going to go straight into Arcane Surge. This would be if you're not playing high voltage, obviously. So single target, no high voltage. We're going to cast our evocation. And then from this evocation here, we're going to cast Arcane Surge. And then from that surge, we're doing the touch of the Magi, like we talked about before. But we're going to be casting the missiles afterwards. So you'll see it happen here. It comes out. There's my touch. And now I'm going to press missiles. Okay. And after this, it's basically the same thing. You're just doing blasting, uh, you know, two blasts because we have two nether precision here. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is intuition, which is our four piece bonus, our tier bonus. And before I said, you know, just treat that like you would glorious incandescence. But I want to kind of show it to you here. Uh, so we should be getting an intuition proc shortly, if I remember correctly. Just going to let this play out just a little bit longer. Okay, here it is. So intuition proc is active. See it? It's this brain on my UI. It's this little purple square on arcane brush. So what's going to happen here is I have one stack of nether precision. The idea with this is we, if we have nether precision, um, you know, we're going to queue it from our blast if we're currently casting a blast. So I'm going to cast this blast here into brush. And it's actually perfect for showing the next thing. So what this does is it basically allows us to enter Burden while not casting Arcane Blast. And the condition for Burden that I alluded to earlier whenever I said we would talk about more of this later in the advanced section is this situation right here. We have Burden the Power 
and we're not currently casting arcane blasts. So what I'm going to do here, instead of like casting the typical, you know, like missiles, bless, bless, barrage, um, I'm actually going to missiles and then I'm going to barrage on its own. So the reason why this is better is because barrage does more damage. So um, again, the condition for this is just that you have at least one nether precision and burden of power is active and you weren't casting an arcane blast. Like you're not locked into an arcane blast. So like you don't have to like cancel a cast. It's not worth it to cancel your cast to do this. It's only good if it naturally happens like it just did there. So I'm going to missiles here and I'm going to barrage. And that barrage is going to consume the burden of power and also give me the effect of glorious incandescence. So it keeps me at four charges. And now I can continue with the blast. If this is too much for you, if you're already overwhelmed by the base rotation, get the basics of that first. Don't don't try this out until you have the basics down. Uh, it's a very, very minor optimization. But yeah, that's really it. Um, this is the uh, the newest information. So hopefully this is something that you can start practicing and implementing in your playstyle. But I just want to make sure that you had the latest information here and also that you saw what intuition kind of looks like in practice. All right, we're going to move on to the AOE now. All right, so when it comes to AOE, we're going to make some talent choice changes just right off the bat. Uh, so the first thing is whenever we add even a second target, we're going to move Consortium Bubble over to Arcing Cleave. And then after that, if we want to get even more AOE damage, uh, we can take one point out of Prodigious Savant and put it into Orb Barrage. Uh, and this will give us a lot of cleave value here. Also, we can change Savor the Moment and put in more Execute damage. Because in AOE, we're going to cast more Arcane Barrages. So having the Execute component here is really nice. Uh, and also keep in mind, Resonance does increase our damage whenever we have more targets, right? And we're going to be cleaving more targets with Arcane Cleave. And then if you want even more AOE damage for a situation like maybe Mythic Plus, you can take out that other point in Prodigious Savant and put it into High Voltage. This will allow our Arcane Missiles to also give us Arcane Charges, basically giving us another path to getting our charges back. And then there is one last thing. So this is kind of a quality of life thing. But if you want to run a second orb, it definitely feels a lot better when it comes to your damage in Mythic Plus. Sometimes you can have these situations where you just have like really bad RNG and you don't get any resets with your Orb Barrage. It can be kind of nice to maybe put a point into Charged Orb. Uh, typically what I do for that is I either take out Eureka or Dematerialize, more than often Dematerialize, and I will put it over here into Charged Orb. And that just makes it a lot easier in AoE to, uh, to get the good damage consistent whenever you're doing those big pulls. Okay, so let's talk about AoE. And I want to warn you, if you're trying to jump straight into the AoE without first mastering the single target, it is not going to end well for you because you need to understand the single target through and through before you reach the point where you can do the AoE because we're doing single target plus additional steps. There's just more rules added on top of it, okay? Uh, but just to distill it down to like the most basic elements of it, right? The foundation of it. We are trying to get as many four charge arcane barrages out as possible while also not getting stuck at zero charges or like low charges, okay? So we're gonna be doing something that's very similar to single target, just more barraging. Um, so things that we can use to get back up to four charges, we obviously have arcane orb. That's a great way to do it. We have uh, arcane missiles. Arcane missiles is gonna generate charges because we're running high voltage. Um, we can obviously use stuff like shifting power to get our orb back up. Um, you know, Aether Tumint, if that's up, we can actually save our missiles until after we brush. So instead of using the missiles to get the Nether Precision on our four charge Arcane Brush, we can brush first without Nether Precision and then use Aether Tumint to get back up. Um, and that's going to instantly refill our four charges because whenever your missiles is AoE, it's pretty much always going to like refill all your charges instantly. Um, on average, a high voltage uh, Arcane Missile is going to give you like one charge, one or two charges. Aether Tumint, it's going to instantly refill them all. Um, but anyway, so on the opener, let's just rewind here. So on the opener, we want to, and I've slowed this down quite a bit, uh, we want to use evocation first, just like we did in single target, uh, only we're actually playing the, uh, we're playing high voltage here, so we're actually going to rip an orb. Um, keep in mind, this orb is something that you would use if you're just like coming into the pull uh, as it's starting. If you actually have prep time, like if you can uh, run with the tank and not pull aggro and maybe just get out a couple arcane explosions before everything is settled while the mobs are still getting gathered up, um, and go in with like one or two arcane charges already, like you can skip this orb because, uh, you know, in that case, you could save the orb for the, in your actual cooldowns and be able to get even more barrages out, more damage out because you're essentially using arcane explosion as a way to generate on the move. Um, but that's really all you should be using arcane explosion for. Like we do not want to use arcane explosion AOE unless we've made a mistake and we're at zero charges and we have no way to get back up. Um, and it really is a mistake at that point. Like you shouldn't be in a case where you have zero charges unless you made a mistake, unless you're about to use something to instantly refill some, right? Uh, but anyways, we evocation, 
And then uh, here I'm going to use the orb because I'm pretending like I just came into the pool later or something. So I'm just going to rip the orb here uh, and everything's already grouped. So we're good to go. And then we're going to missiles and we're going to clip it with a surge just like we do in single target. But in this case, we have four charges, right? So from this, I'm going to arcane surge since I have my nether precision available. I'm going to arcane surge and I'm going to barrage into touch here. Okay, so the barrage goes out. We instantly refill our charges with touch using the macro right here. So there it is. And uh, what we're going to do here in AoE, even in AoE, we're going to blast into barrage. Okay, so the reason why I'm going to barrage here is because I have four charges. I have nether precision up. I have an arcane orb up and a clear casting. So I have a lot of ways to get back up to four charges, right? So I'm free to barrage here. So I'm just going to barrage here after this blast. The reason why we're using this blast, by the way, just to remind you, is the Magi Spark talent. Uh, the Arcane Blast is going to be required to get the explosion on our Touch of the Magi. So this should actually trigger the explosion right here, or maybe the missiles afterwards, but either way. Um, and I do queue a barrage from that again, because I have orb available. But in this case, I got a proc, right? I got orb barrage, so I'm not going to need to use any of my resources. I can just uh, wait a second. Um, I have four charges, so I'm going to use the missiles here to get another precision. And then I'm going to immediately use Barrage here because I still have Orb. I still have another clear cast. I am free to use my Barrage here. So we Barrage here. Now notice, I have Aether Attunement up. Um, I did not get a Orb Bombardment. Okay. Um, I want to actually use my Orb here since I'm running the two Orbs. I just want to get my Orb out. So right here, I could actually just Missiles. And that would instantly refill all four of my charges and give me the ability to... Uh, to do a barrage there afterwards, um, or I could orb here. I'm just opting for the orb instead, um, but I don't think that really matters too much. It's just a matter of um, trying to get all my cooldowns on cooldown since I have two charges there. Uh, but anyway, so we orb here, and then I'm going to barrage again, right? So that used my, my last uh, nether precision, and I did get an orb barrage proc from this, right? So normally I would actually missiles here for nether precision, so I could have you know four charges with nether precision up, but because it's Aether Attunement specifically, I'm actually going to opt to barrage again because I know I can just get right back up, right, if I need to. So I'm going to barrage again here. And then now, uh, since I didn't get it or barrage proc, here's where I use my Aether Attunement. I'm going to let this thing channel out. In the heat of uh, an AoE pull, if you clip your Aether Attunement missiles here, it's not like the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. Uh, but we do want to let this fully channel if we can. It's good practice. Uh, but anyway, so right here, um, I'm going to use uh, a barrage here. Um, and that will consume burden of power. You could also use like a blast in the barrage. Um, that will give you more damage on your primary target. So that would be like more of the funnel kind of play style. Um, but here I'm just going to go for the barrage. And that burden of power, even though it is not technically glorious incandescence, the way that they've redesigned this thing is it will actually count as glorious incandescence too. So whenever I brush here, you're going to notice me get right back to four charges. There's advantages and disadvantages to this. Um, I'm not sure how it sims out, but. A one disadvantage is that you're going to have like one less spear, Spellfire Sphere generated. Um, but obviously getting the extra damage on my barrage, I feel like in this case would make up for that. Uh, and then right here, so I have uh, clear casting available, right? So I am free to use barrage. I can just barrage here. And then I have missiles. So I want to get back to four charges. I'm going to use my missiles to do that. So we're going to go ahead and send the missiles. And by the way, whenever you're in a situation where you're spending your clear cast in AoE, sometimes you're going to use missiles more than once in a row. And that is normal uh, because you're using missiles not just to get another precision. You're also using it as a way to quickly get your arcane charges. So it's pretty common to actually use like more than one missile in a row in AoE just to get right back. But anyway, so in this situation right here, right, like if I am here and I don't have... Uh, an orb available. I don't have any clear cast available. What I would actually do is just use Arcane Blast. So like I'm actually going to queue up Arcane Blast here and you will be using a lot of Arcane Blast in your AoE rotation because you're kind of funneling. It's the, it's the funnel rotation, right? You're, you could go for like pure AoE. You could just forego these rules and just say, I'm just sending all of my barrages. The damage is basically the same, but your damage on your primary target, which actually matters a lot, like your, your focus, your funnel damage is going to be so much lower. That's actually way worse to do that. So that's why we want to make sure that we're like always able to uh, get priority damage out while we're also AoE. That's our strength, so we should play to it. Uh, but anyways, so right here, uh, I'm just going to use a last Arcane Blast into a Barrage. Uh, and you'll notice that my Arcane Surge is about to end. So I'm going to queue the Barrage from this right here. Okay, Arcane Soul activates. So now I'm just, same rules as single target, I'm just going to do a, a couple Barrages here. 
um, just to get up to uh, four charges. I did queue a missile there because I wasn't sure if it on the timing. It's hard to do it whenever you're actually doing this. It's so fast paced whenever you're actually playing. This is 25% speed, by the way. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, uh, barraging here, getting my uh, nether precision, spending that there. So right here, I have three charges of clear casting, three clear casts, and I have Aether Tumen available. So I'm actually going to go for missiles here because I know I have time to get a barrage in at the end. But I'm actually going to clip this Aether Tumen because I want to make sure I exit with three clear casting. Um, and inside of Arcane Soul, clipping Aether Tumen is not, uh, it's not like a 1% loss. It's more like DPS neutral, um, at least according to the Sims I've run recently. So uh, I feel like it's better to make sure that you exit with the three clear casting. I feel like that's a bigger deal, but it probably doesn't make too big of a difference if you just were to barrage here. Uh, but anyways, since I have three clear casts, I'm going to clear cast and I will clip this to make sure I exit with three. Just like so. Boom. See, right at the very end, we get that out. And then uh, here, you know, just like in single target, we'd want to make sure that we, uh, well, we use our barrages, our, uh, we're at three clear casts, so we'd want to use the arcane missile. But more importantly, we want to make sure that we get our shifting power off cooldown uh, right away. So I think I actually opt for a barrage here. Uh, you do actually have like a small window. And then I use a missiles just to not be sitting on three. So yeah, right here I'm using that missile, so I'm not sitting at three charges. And then I would want to use shifting power to get my cooldowns back up. And in AoE, sometimes this second touch, you'll be tempted to save it like for the next pull or something like that. Um, generally, I would recommend against doing that in Mythic Plus, because if you do that, what's going to happen is, is just like in single target, you're going to offset your cooldowns. So like next time you have your evocation ready and your surge ready, your touch won't be ready. So it's going to be this awkward situation where you're like, all systems go except for one. We actually cannot launch. Um, so even if the pull is about to die and I won't even get like the full damage out of the touch of the Magi, I'll try to like at least proc the, uh, the Magi spark explosion. So I get like something out of it. Um, and whenever the target dies, if they still have touch of the Magi on them, it will explode early. So at least you'll get some damage out of it. But it, it just, in my opinion, it's better to just make sure that you keep this thing on cooldown for the mini one. Uh, so that it's it lines up for the big one because the big one's the one that actually matters, right? That's the one that matters so much more. So just like having everything up for your next set of cooldowns seems more important to me. So yeah, I mean, if you feel like you're struggling with this, just know that you're not the only one. Like I struggle with this too, it, and it's partly to do with the fact that we've had so many arcane charges. It's been such a tumultuous beta, and then even release for arcane, like stuff just keeps changing. So I want to give a special shout out to Porum for keeping up with these updates. And uh, making sure to work with others to keep the APL, uh, you know, on on par and uh, making it, you know, clear to everyone. So if you're having additional struggles, obviously go check the Wowhead guide. It's great. Has all the information you need. Uh, and uh, keep practicing. If you feel like you're still struggling with AOE, it's probably because you cut corners. You probably didn't get the single target rotation down enough to begin with. And uh, that's not good. You need to make sure that you get that down pat before you move on to the AOE because it really is fast paced. Like you have to make extremely fast decisions um, and uh, just, you know, knowing when is safe to barrage versus when isn't safe. That's really what it comes down to. And um, yeah, just, you know, keep working on it and you'll eventually get there. Practice makes perfect again. So putting together a video like this takes a lot of time. So I appreciate it. If you made it all the way to the end, uh, I would really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up to show your appreciation for the video. That definitely helps the metrics. And also, if you like my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and also ring that notification bell. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.